Uh, sure. So my name is Jonge Kangwa. So as of today, that's why I do different things. But as of today, I'm here as the uh, director of arts, culture, and global health public engagement at UGHE, and uh, the organizer of uh, Hamoy Festival. Uh, otherwise, I'm uh, I'm trained in global health. Uh, communication and I'm also a musician and a writer. Amazing, so you're already doing both at the same time. That's how the ID came <laughs> from my own experience. Can you imagine? And for our next guest we have um, Dr. Shriya Shatterjee. She's an art historian and an environment humanities scholar. Stria specializes in the political ecologies of art and design in the 19th and 20th centuries, with a particular focus on transitional, uh, tra transitional, transi transnational, sorry, transnational environmental histories, the histories of art and science, and the relationships between climate and race. She is the founder and project lead of visualizing the virus. Um, to also just give you a little bit of uh, background of visualizing the virus, it's a, an international digital project. It is an interactive platform that showcases and investigates the diverse ways in which the coronavirus virus, virus is visualized, imagined, and iniquities it makes visible. The finding visualization in the broadcast uh, broadest sense, the project explores the representations of the virus and especially the disparities, histories, and the futures, its existence continues to reveal. Do we have uh, Dr. Shreya? Oh yes, you can hear us and we can also hear you. Now, just give us an overview of the project visualizing the virus. Tell us more about it. Yeah, sure. So, um Visualizing the virus, as uh, I mean, some of you might have seen it uh, already and uh, and some long. It started off as a, a relatively small project, but uh, as a way of really thinking um, together about various issues. So pandemics very uh, often are thought of as the realm of um, realm of the sciences, but but really to think about the inequalities and. Um, um, the different kinds of social and cultural things that uh, pandemics made visible was really quite important to the project. And the very seed of the project uh, really starts a little bit thinking about what it means to see, uh, because uh, viruses are something that you can't really see at all. And I'm an art historian, um, and since uh, when I was um, coming up with the project, very interested in the idea of how what it means to be thinking about a, um, an invisible agent, really, that's entering your body, um, kind of working with your body um, to um, wreak havoc on a larger um, string of things. Uh, and, and in that sense, like, thinking about uh, what, what it means to see, also start, we started thinking about um, inequalities and um, all the different ways, the things that we don't see. Right, um, like all the um, systemic uh, and infrastructural um, differences, healthcare, um, gender equality, um, and, and so on. So really, the project is about bringing different voices together um, to to think intersectionally about um, various things that um, have to do with the pandemic. So that's where the visualizing comes in. Came about to this idea of the project. How do it? And what inspired you to uh, come about with this uh, project? I'm sorry, but you did that. Could you repeat the question? I couldn't hear you at all. Yes. Oh, I'll I'll can you hear me now? Can you hear everything? Yes. Um, I'm saying you were talking about tackling inequalities in mm -hmm. uh, the project. Now, could you tell us how you came about with this project and what inspired it? What is the inspiration behind it? Thank you. 
Okay, now how does this relate to Hamwe Festival? How does it relate specifically to this event? Now, before we actually go to Injonge, have you personally watched the films? Uh, not yet. I'm still waiting to uh, watch them. I guess we're all waiting for that. Injonge? <laughs> um, yes. So how did visualizing the virus uh, relate with Hamu Festival? Um, I think we're trying to do the same thing, communicate, analyze, and uh, uh, invite for, di for discussion on regarding the non-biological aspects of this, uh, of this pandemic. And yes, there is the virus, but there is also a lot of reason why this virus became a global pandemic. The way we interact with the environment, the way we interact with each other, uh, why uh, also this pandemic is affecting some people more than others. Not everybody has the same uh, risk in front of it, there is age, but there is also all the comorbidities. Uh, there is also your socioeconomic uh, status because you can definitely be affected by the virus, but you can also be affected by everything that uh, uh, a confinement and a lockdown does to an economy and an individual. So I think that uh, both Sria and us are trying to look at health that way. And that's, I think, where we are uh, joining. So when we met, uh, a bit less than a year ago, we talked about it, and I, I like to sometimes take things literally, so like visualizing the virus. Okay, let's let's see. Uh, so I said about photograph films, and what I like about films is like uh, it really takes the time to analyze an issue, and uh, it gives the voice of uh, a lot of voice to someone. I really love films, and then um, we decided to commission for Rwandan filmmakers that through their work have also already analyzed socioeconomic problems through this way, trying to not only focus on the issue, but everything that is around it that aggravates it, and that you cannot understand the issue if you don't look at the whole. Um, so we collaborated with them, talked about uh, global health, about uh, economy, about all those science that for some reason have been divided, but they look at the same reality and the same problems. And then uh, from there, they, they created stories. Uh, so we have four films, um, Ganza Moise, Mutiganda Wankunda, Ines Gihizgwe, and uh, Sharon Kalimba. Very different voices, very different ways of looking at problems. Uh, there is one documentary for uh, fictions, uh, and it goes um, from analyzing the story of uh, a motard that uh, is receiving the news about lockdowns, uh, analyzing what happened in a household, in a couple, uh, analyzing the stories of uh, what happened to people that have uh, that are in the informal sector that have uh, already vulnerable jobs and that lost their jobs, what happened in their head but also in their interaction uh, and analyzing loneliness of people that uh, lost opportunity. And through that, across all the films you can look um, what is discussing, it's mental health, social fabric, socioeconomic issues. So it's very interesting. Um, stories. Uh, I've watched the films <laughs> and I uh, really enjoyed it. I really encourage them. So tomorrow there will be the film by uh, Mutiganda. Uh, you saw an excerpt in the video interruptions. Um, the day after, there will be Ines Gihirgwe 
the day after, there will be the documentary by Sharon Kalimba, and uh, we finish the festival on the 14th with the film by Ganza Mois. Um, really encourage you to, to come and see. Uh, they will be available online. So, yeah, that's what I have to say. <laughs> now, just to um, go back to you, Shreya, there are so many challenges, of course, you mentioned some of them, but how do you expect to uh, tackle this in uh, inequality, especially in this project? And tell me some of the challenges or gaps that are already there that you think this project is actually gonna be able to actually solve it or bring a solution to them. Yeah, this is a really good question. I think especially, like the question about solving inequality and making inequality visible is really key. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Go on, you uh, expl explain to us. Right. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Shia, for being with us. Thank you very much, Njonge, for being with us. Um, I hope you're doing well in UK. Hope it's not too cold. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, up next, we're just gonna go for um, a video transition, and then we're gonna come back with more. <laughs> <laughs>